He faked his death. After being buried by an avalanche for two days, Ling Feng miraculously survived. The entire special forces team was wiped out. Ling Feng was in immense grief. He can't die here. With strong willpower, Ling Feng walked back to West Mountain Base on foot. Upon learning the full story, Chen Xinyan was instantly furious. I entrusted half of the base's elite soldiers to you, and yet you came back alone. Do you know how precious those genetically modified mutants are? They were selected through numerous experiments, each capable of overpowering a hundred ordinary soldiers with their combat skills. It's your mismanagement that led to their deaths, making you the center of West Mountain Base. How dare you show your face at West Mountain Base? Ling Feng had nothing to say in response. Allowing my comrades to die under the avalanche indeed makes me responsible for the greatest fault, but all this should be blamed on that damn Zhang Yi. Ling Feng suddenly knelt before Chen Xinyan. Lord Chen, I am willing to accept any punishment, even if it means death. I have no complaints. However, I beg you to give me a chance to redeem myself. If I don't personally take down Zhang Yi, I won't rest in peace even in death. Chen Xinyan's chest heaved violently, and he looked coldly at his top warrior, almost wishing he could kill him on the spot. But considering the current situation, he seemed to need this sharp knife. He then spoke in a calmer tone. Well, it's also our fault for underestimating the enemy's strength. Zhang Yi is too cunning, so I can't blame you entirely. This time, I won't hold you accountable, but it depends on your future performance. If you make a similar mistake again, you will be punished for all your crimes. Chen Xinyan didn't want to see Ling Feng, so he waved his hand, signaling him to go back. Confining him to quarters for a week was his punishment, but turning around and thinking of Zhang Yi, the thorn in his side, his headache started again. It seems I've underestimated him. This disastrous defeat has severely weakened West Mountain Base. I must quickly replenish our forces. Otherwise, if other powers learn of our significant loss in strength, it would inevitably attract their covetous eyes. With this thought, Chen Xinyan quickly called for Guro. Ling Feng just said he brought back quite a few survivors. How are the test results? Guro looked at the tablet in her hand. The test results are not out yet, but this batch is all young and middle-aged people from rural areas, with very excellent physical conditions. There's a high probability of producing mutants. Chen Xinyan snorted lightly. The awakening of mutants is not as simple as you think. Not everyone can become like Ling Feng. There's no time to delay. The base urgently needs to replenish its strength. Hurry up and experiment on them. If manual catalysis doesn't work, then implant Ling Feng's cells. In any case, we cannot allow the base's overall combat power to drop too much. Hearing this, Guro's eyes flashed with a hint of horror. Shouldn't we rush this matter? If the experiments are rushed, the success rate might not even reach 3%, leading to more needless sacrifices. Chen Xinyan, however, didn't care about this. He waved his hand indifferently and said, What I need now is combat power, not labor force. There are still many survivors in this city. Finding and supplementing them is not difficult, but once we lose strong military force, we won't have any say in this city. As he spoke, Chen Xinyan's expression became more ruthless. My goal is the entire Heavenly Sea City, not just surviving in a small place of West Mountain. This was the first time Chen Xinyan revealed his ambition. Even his longtime secretary, Guro, was taken aback, nodding repeatedly with utmost respect. I'll arrange it right away. After Guro left, Chen Xinyan's face was filled with worry. How should I deal with this Zhang Yi? Even Ling Feng, fighting him personally, couldn't handle him. Do I really need to ask for help from River South Domain? Letting that Mr. Zhu support me with a missile? Should I use a missile? Chen Xinyan was still undecided. But how should I handle this thorn? Zhang Yi. Yes, handle. It was a kind of superior handling. Chen Xinyan still believed. Zhang Yi is just a trouble within my territory. As long as I remove this trouble, my personal authority in West Mountain Base won't be shaken. The favor from River South Domain's old Zhu shouldn't be wasted so easily. It's been my trump card all along. There are still many powers in Heavenly Sea City. With the deterrence of this trump card, other powers hardly dare to harbor any ill intentions towards West Mountain Base. I don't want to use this relationship unless absolutely necessary. Chen Xinyan was torn inside. Since a hard approach won't work, let's try persuading him one last time. Just offer some illusory conditions. After all, making grand promises is what I do best. Chen Xinyan immediately called the Minister of Information, ordering him to contact Zhang Yi right away. After a brief setup, Zhang Yi also received the call request. Chen Xinyan thought to himself, if this negotiation fails, then use a missile to flatten my shelter. Upon connecting, Zhang Yi directly addressed him. I've long admired your reputation. Chen Xinyan, having been the top leader in the area for so long, Chen Xinyan had not been directly addressed by his name in a long time, but he still managed a smile that didn't reach his eyes. Brother Zhang Yi, it's truly surprising that you are still alive, but your luck has run out. Zhang Yi waved his hand. Old Chen, I advise you to stop messing with me. Look, all the elites you sent are taken care of by me. Now that you are significantly weakened, you better take care of yourselves. Zhang Yi teased Chen Xinyan with an incredibly annoying expression. Why bother me when you have no real strength? Wouldn't it be nice to just hide in your mound? I think you should give up your pointless fantasies. Better to let go sooner. I'm a person who loves peace. I don't mind coexisting peacefully with you. How about we agree to not interfere with each other from now on? Zhang Yi spoke in a condescending tone, giving Chen Xinyan a way out.
out, but Chen Qingyan seemed ungrateful. Zhang Yi, I advise you not to misjudge the situation. Don't think I really can't deal with you. I'm sparing you because I value talent, not because I can't launch a destructive strike against you. If you're willing to submit to me, I can make you the second in command of West Mountain Base. You've never experienced being second only to one, above tens of thousands, have you? However, to show your sincerity, you need to hand over all the materials you have. Hearing this, Zhang Yi laughed, propping up his legs in a relaxed manner. Who would covet being your second in command at West Mountain Base? Are you senile? I'm the victor here. You're out of options now, aren't you? Thinking you can be my boss? You must be out of your mind. Show care and Yang Mi at his side also burst into laughter at this. Seeing this, Chen Xingyan grew even angrier. The presence of two such beautiful women in this guy's shelter meant he was already utterly defeated in terms of influence. Zhang Yi continued to mock. How about I make you my subordinate instead? From now on, I'll take care of you. You just stay quietly in that mound of yours. If anything happens, just use my name. Chen Xingyan became instantly furious. You ignorant fool. Your end is near. Zhang Yi still wore a smug expression. Then come at me. I'm waiting. Chen Xingyan's expression suddenly turned grim. Do you really think I've run out of options? Let me tell you plainly. With just one phone call, I can have a missile sent here. One strike could flatten your shelter, no matter how sturdy your shelter is. Are you sure it can withstand a precise missile strike? Chen Xingyan's eyes were bloodshot with a murderous intent. Hearing this, Zhang Yi was startled. This old guy can't be serious, can he? But Zhang Yi quickly recovered. Don't scare me, old man. Where would Heavenly Sea City get missile capabilities? You can't possibly be calling in missiles from another region. Do you have that kind of power? Chen Xingyan laughed. You, a commoner from the lower levels. How would you know whether I have the means to do it or not? Let me tell you, boy, with just one phone call, I can obliterate your shelter. Zhang Yi, however, remained unconvinced after hearing this. If you had such great power, why wait until now? Your main force, Ling Feng, has been worn down by me for a whole month. So what now? Chen Xinyan spoke with a tone of moral righteousness. My patience has its limits. I hope you won't be too stubborn to see reason. I valued your talent, which is why I haven't struck you down. Now, you have two choices. Either submit to me, or I'll flatten your shelter. The choice is yours. Zhang Yi became angry, thinking highly of yourself, aren't you? But he still cautiously said, if if you really have the capability to call in a missile, then prove it to me. If you're really that capable, I wouldn't lose face by following you. Chen Xinyan's face darkened. What joke are you making? Can such a thing be tested? I don't have time to squabble with you. Saying this, Chen Xinyan's eyes were filled with murderous intent. You better wise up. I've said my patience has its limits. Zhang Yi looked at the old man's angry face. The missile matter doesn't seem made up on the spot, but upon closer thought, this person has a strong ability to deceive, and no one can grasp his true intentions. Zhang Yi pondered and said, let me think about it. Seeing Zhang Yi's tone softened. Chen Xinyan felt somewhat proud inside. He thought Zhang Yi was still too young, easily suppressed by him. His authority maintained. The wise know when to submit. Don't think about playing any tricks with me. Delaying is pointless. Zhang Yi appeared indifferent again. You've been fighting me for a month with Ling Feng. A few more days won't make a difference. I'm giving you one day to decide. If you don't choose to submit within 24 hours, I'll flatten your shelter. Then he directly hung up the video call. Chen Xinyan took a deep breath, then closed his eyes and prayed with his hands together. This missile opportunity is hard to come by. I hope this guy is wise enough to choose to surrender. Otherwise, this precious opportunity will be wasted. Zhang Yi sat up and stretched. It seems we can't stay in the shelter for long. We must evacuate quickly. If we can't face it, can't we hide? Yang Xingxin also looked doubtful. If he really had missiles, why bring them out now? Wouldn't that mean all his soldiers died in vain before? Zhang Yi spread his hands and explained. He definitely doesn't have any, but the neighboring capital of Splendor houses the River South Domain, which has several missile bases. Chen Xinyan has been entrenched in Heavenly Sea City for so long. It's not impossible he has connections and capital of splendor. The most important thing is, whether he's telling the truth or not, as long as there's a slight possibility, we can't risk our lives on it. So, I've decided we better scatter first. Show Kier's eyes lit up. Are we going back to Yuelu District? Since arriving at the shelter, Show Kier often missed the days in the safe house. After all, every corner there carried memories of her and Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi smiled and nodded. Right, we can only go back there for now. Everyone agreed with Zhang Yi's decision. The hardest to leave will be Chun Lei. Having just moved in for a few days, with plenty to eat and drink. Now leaving a five-story shelter to return to a three-bedroom apartment. Truly a pity. Liang Yu suddenly stood up. At least before we leave, you have to fulfill our agreement. Zhang Yi looked towards Yang Xinxin, taking a SIM card from her hands and said, of course, but the whole thing still requires teacher Liang to take a risk at West Mountain Base once more. Yang Xinxin's previously implanted virus could help her bypass the base's identity recognition system to find an opportunity to rescue her students. She decided to continue hiding in the base. One day, she overheard a conversation between two experimental subjects. Due to Liang Yu's betrayal angering Chen Xinyan, her students were also subjected to transformation experiments ahead of schedule, making Liang Yu feel even more guilty. After the experimental subjects left, she took out the SIM card Zhang Yi had given her before. This SIM card, specially modified by Yang Xinxin, not only
only had strong signal reception capabilities, but could also bypass multiple server encryptions without being detected by West Mountain Base. Liang Yu sent a message to Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi, I need to hurry and take my students out of here. Ling Feng is not dead. My defection to you has been exposed. Now, my students and I are in great danger. Zhang Yi immediately responded. Try to sneak into the network center and insert the chip I gave you into any computer. This way, Yang Xingxin will be able to control the entire network of West Mountain Base, and then we can help you escape. Liang Yu was slightly startled. Accomplishing this task is easier said than done. The whole base is filled with surveillance, and the entrance to the information department is heavily guarded. This task is almost impossible to complete, but Liang Yu knew in her heart. Right now, this is the only chance to save my students. As long as Yang Xingxin can use this chip to cripple the network for a while, I will have the opportunity to rescue the students. She immediately sent a message to Zhang Yi. Don't worry, Zhang Yi, I will definitely fulfill what I promised you. I hope you also remember what you promised me. Before setting out, Zhang Yi had promised Liang Yu that after escaping, he would provide them with some food and temporary shelter. As for other assistance, it would depend on Liang Yu's contribution. Zhang Yi responded without hesitation. Of course, that's no problem. Liang Yu turned off her phone, removed the SIM card, and started planning her route in her mind. The information department is also in the second life capsule, about 500 meters away from her current location. Liang Yu took a deep breath, her gaze quickly becoming firm, muttering to herself, never thought I'd go back to my old job. When I was a high-ranking official's bodyguard, I received systematic professional training. On the other hand, Zhang Yi and the others were on their way to the Yuelu district. Just after contacting Liang Yu, Zhang Yi said with anticipation, to win this confrontation, Liang Yu's role is crucial. After all, knowing both ourselves and the enemy ensures we will not be in danger in any battle. Knowing all their cards, we can take a significant initiative. Yang Xingxin stared at her laptop. I also want to know if they truly have the capability to deploy missiles. After all, in such a post-apocalyptic world, the value of holding such strategic weapons is immense, and the threat to us is incomparable. Yang Xingxin lifted her computer to show Zhang Yi. She had successfully hacked into West Mountain Base's surveillance system. Zhang Yi nodded in admiration. Indeed, unknown forces are what worry us the most. If we can understand the opponent's cards, we can easily counter their moves. At that moment, Lu Karen, who was driving, sighed deeply. Zhang Yi, concerned, asked, what's troubling you? Lu Karen said nervously, we are safe now, but teacher Liang is entering the tiger's den. Her mission is so dangerous. If she gets caught, Zhang Yi raised an eyebrow, thinking to himself, I don't care about her life or death. Our interaction is merely a transaction, nothing more. However, Zhang Yi still smiled and said, teacher Liang has her own good fortune. Her act of rescuing her students is a deed of great merit. Heaven will naturally protect her. Lu Karen nodded in relief upon hearing this. Teacher Liang is so kind. She will surely be fine. Zhang Yi was holding back his laughter on the side, but he decided to keep his thoughts to himself. Let this young girl retain her innocence. Soon, Zhang Yi and his group arrived at Yuelu District. After being away for over a month, the snow had covered up to the sixth floor. The whole district was silent. Uncle Yu and Zhou Jaime were waiting downstairs early on. Unnoticed by everyone on the way, there was an invisible presence in the car. That was Chun Lei, curled up in the trunk, shivering with cold. As everyone got out of the car, Zhang Yi scanned the district. The entire district is silent, devoid of life. Probably everyone is frozen to death. Uncle Yu and Zhou Jaime came over with smiles on their faces. It's too cold outside. Let's hurry upstairs. Uncle Yu had heard the explosion at Lark Manor some time ago, had even contacted Zhang Yi, offering to help, but was refused by Zhang Yi. Uncle Yu understood that his survival to this point was all thanks to Zhang Yi. His life was given by Zhang Yi. The women gathered and were so happy they couldn't stop smiling. Soon they entered the safe house as if it were New Year's. Returning to the long-missed safe house, both Zhang Yi and Zhou Kier showed nostalgic expressions. Zhang Yi couldn't help but sigh. It's been so long since the icy apocalypse began. Zhou Jaime said with a smile, I cleaned the rooms early this morning. Luckily, the rooms are big enough. Let's all squeeze in. Having such a warm and comfortable house in the apocalypse, even sleeping on the floor was acceptable to everyone. Besides, everyone was bored every day. Having more people to talk to was better than anything. Zhang Yi also took off his cold weather gear and sat down to chat with Uncle Yu. Zhang Yi took out a pack of cigarettes from his pocket, offered one to Uncle Yu, and they started smoking. Zhang Yi was the first to speak. Has anything happened in the district during this time? I see everyone else is dead. Did they try to rob you? Uncle Yu chuckled. It's pretty much the same as when you were in the district. After you left, they thought it was safe and came over to me to beg and seek sympathy. But after so long in the apocalypse, I didn't want to be a saint anymore, so I flat out refused them. Later, when they tried to force me, I just took the opportunity to take them all out. You taught me a lot after the apocalypse. Protecting oneself and those around us is more important than anything. Uncle Yu said calmly. Then his gaze sharpened, but not everyone is dead. There's a group of survivors in the district. Zhang Yi was taken aback, then instinctively said, How is that possible? Without external supplies, it's impossible for anyone to have survived until now. Uncle Yu took a drag and said with a smile, You know them well. 
It's Li Jian and his group from Building 18. Zhang Yi looked incredulous. Li Jian's actions had indeed shocked Zhang Yi previously, but he hadn't thought they would last long. Zhang Yi asked curiously, How did they manage to do that? Do you know? Uncle Yu shook his head. I'm not sure. After all, you had advised me not to contact anyone, since people's intentions can be unpredictable after the apocalypse, to avoid being exploited. So, I never interacted with them. I just often saw shadows of people alive in Building 18, knowing that many of them were still surviving. Zhang Yi quietly looked out the window, curiosity stirring within him. It seems I'll have to make time to visit this old friend. Then, Uncle Yu also asked with concern, Is there any danger at your shelter now? Zhang Yi detailed the whole situation to Uncle Yu, leaving him almost dropping his jaw in surprise. No way, they have missiles to deal with a civilian. They're actually willing to use missiles. Zhang Yi took out some food from another space. It's still unclear if they're bluffing or if they really have such capabilities. For safety, I decided to temporarily return to the district to lay low for a while. Once we're sure it's safe, we'll go back. Uncle Yu didn't see it that way. This is no joking matter. Since you're already here, I think it's better for everyone to stay a bit longer. This safe house is still yours. Show Jaime and I can move next door. Uncle Yu understood. This house was originally Zhang Yi's. He wouldn't really consider himself the owner. Zhang Yi patted Uncle Yu's shoulder. I won't stay too long here. Based on my understanding of West Mountain Base, they currently lack precise satellite positioning capabilities and may not be able to pinpoint the shelter's exact coordinates. So, the threat of a precise missile strike might not be real. They also wouldn't know we've moved to Yuelu District. Besides, I'm not sure of houses now. Let's just squeeze in here for the time being. Feeling unsettled by the unknown threats, Zhang Yi was clearly frustrated. Zhang Yi pondered, saying, We have to settle things with West Mountain Base once and for all. The conflict has reached a point where it can't be resolved anymore. Chen Xinyan probably wants me dead by now. As long as I don't concede, he'll definitely try everything to kill me and take everything I have. Zhang Yi sighed helplessly. I just wanted to live quietly in the shelter. Why do they always have to bother me? Uncle Yu, seeing Zhang Yi's gloomy face, tried to comfort him. That's because you have too many good things. Spreading his hands, he added, Look at me. I don't have these problems. Thanks to the snowmobile you gave me, I can go out to find supplies. But that's just to maintain a basic living. It's inevitable that people would covet what you have. Given your resources, there's nothing you can do about it. Zhang Yi stood up and walked to the window, looking in the direction of West Mountain Base. If only I could wipe out West Mountain Base, he said with a laugh, treating the thought more as a joke. After all, facing such a massive base, even the strongest mutants would only be marching to their death if they attacked rashly. Suddenly, Uncle Yu said seriously, some time ago, a group of very strange people came to the district. They looked like ascetics, about five or six hundred in number. Zhang Yi frowned. That many people, the more people, the greater the threat. Uncle Yu continued, at first, I thought they were here to steal supplies, but later, I realized they didn't seem to have any ill intentions, so I tried to make contact with them. Turns out, they're a religious organization called the Snow Worship Sect. Zhang Yi laughed. Even religions have emerged. It's always been like this throughout history. People like to place their fear of natural disasters on some supernatural existence, turning various calamities into objects of worship. Isn't that how the rain gods and plague gods came to be? Now there's even a snow god. Uncle Yu, reflecting on the past, said, At that time, I didn't take them seriously. But thinking about it now, those people were indeed out of the ordinary, especially their leader. He could tell at a glance that I was a mutant. And what's more bizarre, he even said he could help me unlock the potential of my powers to become even stronger. Hearing this, Zhang Yi became serious. Although he wouldn't find any peculiar abilities strange by now, the mention of unlocking the potential of powers intrigued him. However, he thought to himself, there's no such thing as a free lunch in this world. Why would they help you for no reason? These people are likely fraudsters. As for the ability to see that you're a mutant, I guess they might have encountered you using your abilities outside. While Zhang Yi and Uncle Yu were talking, the women were playfully enjoying themselves. Uncle Yu nodded. That's what I thought too. After all, you've warned me never to easily trust any strangers. So, I directly refused them. They probably thought I wasn't easy to mess with, so they didn't persist too much. But they did enter the district later. I think they went to find Li Jian and the others. I don't know what happened after that. Zhang Yi pondered for a moment. Now, only Uncle Yu's family and the people in Building 18 are in the district. Li Jian and his group surviving until now might be connected to these people. Could it be that someone in Building 18 has also awakened powers? Thinking this, Zhang Yi decided to go and check it out for himself. Uncle Yu immediately offered, I'll go with you. Zhang Yi smiled slightly and waved his hand. No need for that. Those people have never had bad intentions. I'll just take flower with me. Despite saying this, Zhang Yi still put on a bulletproof vest and donned combat gear. Seeing Zhang Yi ready for action, Lu Karen and Yang Xinxin came out and asked, Brother Zhang Yi, where are you going? Zhang Yi simply said, I'm going to meet a few old friends. The entire district was eerily silent, with no sign of life in sight. At the base of a building, in the snow, Zhang Yi saw hundreds of snow mounds that looked like graves. These are all graves, aren't they? Zhang Yi couldn't help but remark, to be buried this way in the icy apocalypse is practically a luxury. Approaching building 18th century, 
entrance, Zhang Yi took out his handgun and fired two shots into the air. The crisp sound of gunfire reminded the residents of Building 18 of the fear they once felt under Zhang Yi's dominance. Li Jian, looking out the window towards the source of the gunshots, immediately recognized him. Zhang Yi, it's Zhang Yi, he's back. A chill went through Li Jian's heart. He gave us a child to take care of, and we failed to keep the child alive. He's probably here to hold us accountable. Li Jian's wife and child approached him. Why has this demon come back? We've finally managed to survive until now. We can't let him destroy us again. I'm going down to confront him. Li Jian gently embraced his wife. If he finds out about that incident, all of us might end up dead. He sighed deeply. I'll go down and talk to him. We stand no chance against him if it comes to force. Don't act rashly. Li Jian earnestly said to his wife. If he does kill me, don't think about revenge. Just stay here and protect our last hope. After saying this, he left the house and headed downstairs. Soon, he arrived at the corridor window. Zhang Yi, looking at the emaciated man before him, said indifferently. It's been a long time. Li Jian, I'm surprised you've managed to survive until now. Zhang Yi looked up to see each floor of the building bustling with people, expressing his surprise. I've been away for over a month, yet it seems like you have even more people now. It's practically a miracle. Zhang Yi asked Li Jian, how did you manage it? Li Jian swallowed hard before answering, it's all thanks to the seeds you left us. Zhang Yi couldn't believe his ears. I was just speaking off the cuff. How could those seeds possibly grow, let alone the freezing temperatures right now? How could there be a harvest in a month's time, enough to feed so many of you? A bold idea then surfaced in Zhang Yi's mind. It seems you've got a mutant in your building, huh? As he said this, Zhang Yi was ready to act at any moment, prepared to kill the man in front of him if anything unusual happened. Seeing this, Li Jian knelt down abruptly. We were wrong. We failed to protect the child you left with us. We tried our best. I'm sorry. Li Jian continued to out desperately. If you must kill, then kill me. Please don't harm the innocent neighbors. After saying this, Li Jian bowed his head, ready to face death. At that moment, from a snow cave beside Zhang Yi, an old man's voice was heard. You can't can't kill Li Jian. If he dies, all of us lose our hope of surviving. The old man, a professor of agronomy, stood firmly in front of Li Jian. Let me die in his place. I've lived long enough anyway. Then, the neighbors rushed to protect Li Jian. I'm single. Let me be the one. A strong man also spoke up. It's not entirely Li Jian's fault that the child died. In such freezing weather, keeping an infant alive is nearly impossible. If you need a life to atone, let me take his place. Li Jian's eyes brimmed with emotional tears. Zhang Yi, witnessing this scene, felt unexpectedly moved. He was struck so Island, as if he saw a glimmer of humanity's light surviving the apocalypse, seeing the neighbors willing to die to protect Li Jian. Even the usually cold-hearted Zhang Yi felt somewhat stirred. He let out an awkward chuckle. I never said I wanted your lives. Li Jian looked at Zhang Yi in shock, humbly admitting, the child you entrusted to us has died. Aren't you here for revenge? Zhang Yi was somewhat speechless at the group's assumption. So, that melodrama was all about this? Scratching his head, Zhang Yi added, I almost forgot I had brought a child here in the first place. That kid was a burden to me. If I wasn't worried about being haunted by guilt. I would have gotten rid of him myself. Their fear and anxiety were because they thought the child was important to me. Spreading his hands, Zhang Yi concluded, death cannot be reversed. I know you all did your best. I won't hold it against you. Hearing this, Li Jian was overjoyed. I don't have to die. Li Jian was deeply moved, believing Zhang Yi to truly be a compassionate person. The other neighbors also breathed a sigh of relief. Zhang Yi, still puzzled, asked, I'm just curious how you managed to survive until now. It's nothing short of a miracle. Li Jian, not daring to withhold any information, said, it's a long story. Why don't you come and see for yourself? Zhang Yi wasn't afraid of any tricks they might play. With Flower, his invincible bodyguard, on his shoulder, it was nearly impossible for anyone to harm him. All right, I'll come in and take a look. Subsequently, Li Jian led Zhang Yi upstairs. On the way, Li Jian talked about the recent events in his building. Li Jian introduced, remember the seeds you gave us last time when you brought the child over? Professor Gu really went on to try various cultivation methods seriously, but the results weren't very good. Even if a very few could sprout, their vitality was extremely weak, making it impossible to have any yield. At that time, we even considered sending out a suicide squad to look for food. Just when we were in utter despair, a group of people claiming to be from the Snow Worship sect arrived in the neighborhood. A gleam flashed in Zhang Yi's eyes. It really has something to do with these weirdos. Do you mean that the Snow Worship sect has helped you survive till now? Li Jian dared not hide anything at this moment. You could say that. At that time, their leader told me he had a way to grant me extraordinary abilities to help us survive. With no other options left, we chose to agree. After all, at most we would just die. I thought no matter what the condition was, it couldn't be harder to accept than death. But what I didn't expect was, they just needed us to believe in the snow god. That's all. Nothing else was required. However, Zhang Yi was skeptical. He never believed that there's such a thing as a free lunch in the world. Based on his many years of gaming experience, the free ones are the most expensive. Zhang Yi couldn't help asking, what is your special ability now? Li Jian pointed at his forehead and said, at that time, he planted a seed into my forehead. Instantly, my whole body felt like it was thrown into an ice cellar. And after a while, it became unbearably hot. Soon after, I lost consciousness.
darkness. When I woke up, my body had developed a strange power. As he said this, Li Jian rolled up his sleeves. Zhang Yi's scalp tingled at the sight. Li Jian's arm was densely covered with protrusions, looking like a petri dish. Each protrusion seemed to be nurturing a plant. Li Jian looked weakly at Zhang Yi. These are all seeds of food crops. My ability is to cultivate plants with my own flesh. After the plants absorb my flesh and blood, they not only have strong vitality, but also grow faster. Zhang Yi looked at Li Jian incredulously and said, Even so, the nutrients from one person can't possibly sustain the food needs of everyone. Li Jian weakly responded, This is indeed a big problem, but fortunately, we have Professor Gu. He is a leading agronomy expert in the country. As he spoke, Li Jian led Zhang Yi to a room's door, mysteriously saying, Prepare yourself mentally. The scene inside might disturb you. Please be understanding. Zhang Yi laughed it off. You're worrying too much. What kind of scene haven't I seen after the apocalypse? Li Jian gave an awkward smile. That's true. Then he opened the door. Despite being prepared, Zhang Yi was still shocked by the scene before him. The room was filled with heaps of corpses, on which grew vigorously healthy crops. The warm and humid air in the room hit them, mixed with an indescribably eerie smell. It wasn't exactly foul, definitely not pleasant. Zhang Yi couldn't help but swallow his saliva at the sight. Li Jian continued to explain, These are all bodies we collected around the neighborhood. To have enough nutrients, this was a reluctant choice. Zhang Yi smirked and said, This is actually quite good. After all, those bodies were of no use anymore. This way, there's no guilt from cannibalism, and the waste is maximally utilized. Zhang Yi curiously asked, Did you guys also make those snow-covered graves outside? Li Jian nodded somewhat sheepishly. Those were piled up by us for storing the bodies. Zhang Yi carefully looked at the lush crops, which seemed to be growing very well. The corpses at their roots, having been drained of nutrients, were basically reduced to skeletons. Flower also curiously sniffed around, seeming to find no difference from ordinary crops. Li Jian mentioned, We have three more of these cultivation rooms. Hearing this, Zhang Yi became worried. Although it's good to be self-sufficient, I see that these crops are sprouting from the nutrients in your body. Continuing this way, you'll eventually be drained dry. Li Jian scoffed. Even if I'm drained into a mummy, I accept it. We've already come to this point. Rather than sitting and waiting for death, it's better to do something, so that my wife and son can survive. When Li Jian mentioned his wife and son, his eyes were full of warmth. Zhang Yi couldn't help but feel admiration for Li Jian. He doesn't have children yet. Perhaps he couldn't fully understand his feeling, thinking, his actions are indeed a bit crazy, but they are admirable to anyone. However, Zhang Yi quickly put away his sympathy, looking sternly at Li Jian and saying, let me see your ability. So far, he had seen many modified mutants, but their abilities were far inferior to those of natural mutants. Yet, the way Li Jian acquired his abilities made Zhang Yi curious. Moreover, Zhang Yi also wanted to know what methods the Snow Worship sect used to awaken abilities in an ordinary person, and to what extent these abilities could be developed. Li Jian didn't refuse, nor dared to. Under Zhang Yi's gaze, he rolled up the sleeve of his arm filled with seeds again. Suddenly, he clenched his fist and started to exert force. Zhang Yi also noticed a white light appearing on Li Jian's forehead. The next moment, his arm's veins bulged, and a seed burst through the skin, sprouting into a wheat seedling about a dozen centimeters tall with a pop. As the seed sprouted, Li Jian's complexion became even paler. Zhang Yi quickly stopped Li Jian. Enough, enough. I roughly understand how it works now. Zhang Yi was speechless. What kind of ability is this? This is simply using one's own flesh and blood to irrigate plants. If abilities could be raided, this would definitely be the worst. Even worse than artificially created mutants. Li Jian hurriedly propped himself up and called for Professor Gu. Quick, transplant this wheat seedling over there. Zhang Yi began to ponder. The snow worship sect really has something. Zhang Yi began to ponder. The snow worship sect really has something. This ability, stimulated artificially, is completely different from naturally awakened mutants. Although it's unclear what the side effects are for now, it definitely causes great harm to the body. Fortunately, it's not an offensive ability. If his ability posed a threat to Zhang Yi, he might have killed Li Jian on the spot. Zhang Yi lost interest in this place and turned to leave the cultivation room. Suddenly, he thought, if the West Mountain base discovers my whereabouts and uses missiles to bomb the Uelu neighborhood, then everyone would be done for. Now that the Lark Manor shelter has been exposed, if it really gets hit by a missile, I must find a new residence quickly. After all, this safe house is too easy for an organization like the West Mountain base to breach. Zhang Yi thought to himself, I wonder what the situation is now with Liang Yu. If she successfully inserted the chip into West Mountain base's information department, according to Yang Xinxin, I would be able to understand every step of their plan. This would allow us to turn from being passive to being active. At this time, inside West Mountain base, to compensate for the loss of a large number of excellent soldiers during the campaign against Zhang Yi, they were also busily accelerating the pace of human experiments. These were young adults abducted from Su family village. The soldiers, armed to the teeth, closely monitored these villagers, leaving them no courage to resist. Then, a villager clenched his fists and shouted, Why should we bear the consequences of your defeat? We haven't done anything wrong. This is unfair. A man burst into tears upon hearing this. We treated you well, 
fed you, and clothed you, and you turned around and killed my wife and children. You are a hundred times more beastly than Zhang Yi. But the next second, two shots rang out, and both were shot in the head on the spot. The soldier who fired the shots warned, I advise you to be smart. This is what happens to those who don't obey. Our base sent out soldiers to deal with your enemies. Now that there have been many sacrifices, it's natural for you to replenish our forces. You'd better obediently accept the experiment. There's still a way to live. You might even successfully awaken abilities and live a life of plenty in the base. Either die now or accept the experiment. You don't need me to tell you how to choose, right? This scene was all witnessed by Liang Yu, hiding nearby, thinking that most of these people would die, and their bodies would be processed into protein substitutes, then fed to the people in the fourth life pod. Liang Yu's stomach churned. At that moment, Liang Yu realized a serious problem. All the core departments of West Mountain Base seemed to be in the second life pod, guarded by soldiers at every department entrance. Due to the limited underground space, the departments were basically interconnected. However, the security in the second life pod seemed sparse, as the higher life pod's residents had no reason to rebel. Being beneficiaries, Chen Xinyan also believed that the source of instability could only come from the fourth life pod, hence the main defensive force was arranged there. Apart from Chen Xinyan's personal guard, other areas were basically in an unguarded patrol state. Now, with over 400 villagers from Su Family Village being sent for experiments, even more guards were drawn away. For Liang Yu, this was the best opportunity to sneak into the information department. As she walked, Liang Yu observed her surroundings, knowing she had to succeed this time. After they're done with these villagers, my students will be next. There's not much time left. Liang Yu quietly arrived at the information department's entrance, about to push open the door, when suddenly a hand tapped her shoulder from behind. Teacher Liang, what are you doing here? Liang Yu was startled. I was so careful. Was I still discovered? Despite her surprise, she clenched her fist, thinking, we've come this far. Might as well go on the offensive. Now that Ling Feng is confined, even if I can't beat the others, escaping shouldn't be too hard. Liang Yu turned around, ready to strike, but the soldier in front of her took off his helmet. Teacher Liang, it's me. Only then did Liang Yu realize that the soldier was her student, Yi Xiaoyan. Liang Yu stopped her attack and said, Yi Xiaoyan, why is it you? Yi Xiaoyan said with a worried expression, Teacher Liang, I've heard about your situation. You finally escaped this base. Why come back now? This place is truly a den of evil. Liang Yu said she came back to rescue him and their classmates, but why were you able to join the special forces? Yi Xiaoyan replied with a bitter smile. It seems you really don't know anything, teacher. I'm the only successful experiment among the students who were taken. As he spoke, Yi Xiaoyan slowly unbuttoned his shirt, revealing a terrifying dark red scar on his chest, resembling the bizarre scar of plant grafting. Liang Yu, agitated, pushed Yi Xiaoyan's shoulder. What about the other students? They didn't all die, did they? Yi Xiaoyan nodded with a dim look in his eyes. All the students who were taken have died. Although Liang Yu had guessed this would be the outcome, she was still exceptionally saddened, seeing that it was not safe to stay. She pulled Yi Xiaoyan to a secluded spot. Yi Xiaoyan did not hesitate, having been through too much hell after the apocalypse. To him, Liang Yu was the only person he could trust in this world. If it wasn't for Teacher Liang, they would have died at Azure Sky Academy long ago. Now, turned into something neither human nor ghost, he also longed for warmth and redemption from Liang Yu. They found a corner where they could avoid surveillance, and Yi Xiaoyan immediately began to vent his grievances. These demons, they don't see us as human beings, using us as experimental rats. You can't imagine what I went through in the laboratory. Saying this, Yi Xiaoyan couldn't stop trembling. West Mountain Base has long discovered that people have a chance to awaken abilities in extreme situations. So, the first step for the test subjects they capture is to torture them in every way possible, including electric shocks, waterboarding, knife cuts, and so on. More than a dozen inhumane methods. The goal is to make the test subjects experience the feeling of being close to death. If all these fail, it basically means this person has no talent for abilities. Then they will inject mutant cells into your body. Saying this, Yi Xiaoyan subconsciously covered his chest. If we can withstand the rejection reaction, we might gain power similar to the transplanters, but the cost is irreversible damage to the body. Currently, the cells used in the experiments are all from Captain Ling Fong. This power, acquired through postnatal modification, is undoubtedly at the expense of one's own lifespan. Yi Xiaoyan, tears in his eyes. Liang Yu, moved, hugged him, then looked into his eyes and asked earnestly, if I say I have a way to get you out of here, would you cooperate with me? Yi Xiaoyan stood up abruptly, clenched his fists. I don't want to stay here for another moment. It would be best to blow up this den of evil. Then Yi Xiaoyan put his helmet on Liang Yu and took her to the entrance of the information department. Yi Xiaoyan, being in charge of patrolling the second life pod, quickly found a reason to send the two guards at the door away. Yi Xiaoyan even used his own identity to help Liang Yu open the door of the information department. For someone with abilities like Liang Yu, passing through this door and inserting a tiny chip into a computer was a piece of cake. Back in the safe house, Zhang Yi received another call request from Chen Xinyan. This time it was a final ultimatum. Chen Xinyan started with a calm tone. Brother Zhang Yi, quickly tell me your answer. Zhang Yi responded with a disdainful
painful laugh. Dream on about me submitting to you. Why don't you submit to me instead? I'll take care of you from now on. Chin Xin Yin, furious, turned pale. This is all your own doing. Then you can turn to ashes along with your shelter. He then hung up the phone directly. Zhang Yi's expression remained very calm. He knew that Chin Xin Yin had lost patience with him. This attitude confirmed that the missile threat was almost certainly real. Do I really have to give up that shelter? Zhang Yi sighed deeply. Let it go then. After all, I have plenty of supplies. As long as the people are alive, that's what matters. Just then, his phone in his pocket suddenly received a message. Zhang Yi abruptly sat up from the couch after reading it. The message from Liang Yi read, The chip has been successfully inserted into West Mountain Base's computer. I've done what you asked. I hope you'll keep your promise to help me and my students escape this place. Without a word, Zhang Yi pushed open Yang Xinxin's room door. Great news, Yang Xinxin. Our plan succeeded. Yang Xinxin immediately sat up from her bed, her eyes brimming with excitement. It's finally my turn to show off. As a world-class genius hacker, having the opportunity to hack into a military-grade shelter was a very fulfilling task for her. I'll start working right now. Yang Xinxin moved to her workstation in her wheelchair. Zhang Yi brought over the shelter's supercomputer, with a flurry of clicks and types. In just two minutes, Yang Xinxin proudly announced to Zhang Yi standing behind her. Now the network of West Mountain Base is in my pocket. Zhang Yi was somewhat surprised. He had thought it would take at least an entire night of hard work. The success came so unexpectedly fast that it felt almost unreal to Zhang Yi. Yang Xinxin said with a hint of arrogance, hacking into this base was not a difficult task for me. If it weren't for their use of an isolated network, I would have broken in much sooner. What I needed was a key to open that door, and Teacher Liang's chip was that key. Technically speaking, what do those technicians at their base have to compare with me? As Yang Xinxin proudly explained, Zhang Yi leaned in close and asked, will our actions be detected? If our intrusion is discovered and they cut off the network again, wouldn't all our efforts be wasted? Zhang Yi moved closer to Yang Xinxin's ear, looking at the screen. This proximity made Yang Xinxin's heart flutter. Yang Xinxin, a bit nervously, said, I've obtained the highest control authority of their base, which is like having a god's eye view over them. This means I can see every action they make, while they can't detect our presence. Hearing this, Zhang Yi's smile deepened. This is perfect. Now we can uncover everything about them. Zhang Yi pointed at the screen. Quickly bring up all the information related to the missiles. I want to see if Chen Xinyin really has the capability he claims. Yang Xinxin operated swiftly and soon retrieved information related to missiles. It seems they don't have the authority to deploy missiles, Yang Xinxin said. Zhang Yi then asked, do they have the possibility of requesting external support, like contacting other places for deployment? Yang Xinxin started searching the West Mountain Base's external communication records and indeed found a crucial conversation. It was Chen Xinyin requesting River South Domain to deploy missiles, and River South Domain agreed to launch precisely at 12 o'clock. Zhang Yi and Yang Xinxin couldn't help but gasp. River South Domain has considerable strength. A missile is indeed not much for them. I just didn't expect Chen Xinyin to have such connections. Zhang Yi hurriedly said to Yang Xinxin, check if they have sent the coordinates of the shelter. Yang Xinxin's movements were very quick. Fortunately, they are still going through the approval process. After all, this involves satellite coordination for precise guidance. They haven't had the chance to send the coordinates yet. Then, Yang Xinxin turned to look at Zhang Yi with a devilish smile. I have an interesting game. Do you want to play, brother? Zhang Yi was puzzled. What time is it? And you're thinking of playing games. She told Zhang Yi. I can change the missile's target coordinates to West Mountain Base, letting them bomb themselves. Wouldn't that be fun? Zhang Yi was both shocked and delighted. That sounds difficult to achieve. They would surely triple check the coordinates before sending. Even if West Mountain Base's information department is foolish, they wouldn't be foolish enough not to recognize their own coordinates, right? Yang Xinxin laughed. That's where you're wrong. Do you think I just secretly modify it before they send it? The logic of a top hacker is never that superficial. I can intercept their send information through packet capturing, then resend it after my modifications. This way, it can be done without anyone noticing. Zhang Yi was thrilled internally. Even if the coordinates are successfully modified, West Mountain Base wouldn't be so easily destroyed by just one missile, right? Thinking this, Zhang Yi called over Liu Karen from behind. Liu Karen is a genius in the field of mechanical engineering and has a profound understanding of engineering physics. Zhang Yi asked Yang Xinxin to bring up the structural blueprints of West Mountain Base. Upon hearing this, Liu Karen immediately leaned in. After carefully reviewing the structure and materials, Liu Karen frowned. Brother Zhang Yi, based on my initial analysis, this shelter seems to be designed for wartime nuclear defense. It's located hundreds of meters underground, and both the materials and thickness exceed those of typical military constructions. For a fortification of this level, one missile would basically be inconsequential. It would require a specialized bunker buster to have any effect. But even then, destroying it with one shot is almost impossible. Johnny thought to himself, this way, wouldn't it just alert them unnecessarily? Once they react and send another missile, wouldn't it be over? If they find any clue leading to the ULU neighborhood and decide to bomb the residential buildings there, wouldn't that be disastrous? For a moment, Johnny was indecisive.
decisive. He finally said to Yang Xinqin, change the coordinates as you suggested. No matter what, the missile must not head towards my shelter. Also, I want all the information on everyone in West Mountain Base, especially the number of mutants and weapons. I need to study this carefully. After speaking, he left their room. Liu Karen, somewhat puzzled, asked Yang Xinqin, what exactly is Brother Zhang you worried about? If you successfully change the coordinates, isn't the missile problem essentially solved? Yang Xinqin, pondering and looking at the screen, said, from his expression just now, I can tell that brother might be planning to take the initiative this time. Liu Karen, however, disagreed with brother's cautious character. It's almost impossible for him to take such a risk. Both girls are highly intelligent and capable of analyzing situations comprehensively. Yet, high intelligence does not necessarily mean they can predict everything, because analyzing human nature also requires a high level of emotional intelligence. Zhang Yi went to a suite on the 20th floor with a crazy plan in mind whether to take this opportunity to completely eliminate West Mountain Base. He seriously pondered the feasibility of the plan. I can't keep hiding forever, like there's a sword hanging over my neck. It's very frustrating. Most importantly, now that Chen Xinyan has the capability to contact other forces to attack me, if larger forces learn my secrets, I'll never have peace. At this point, eliminating West Mountain Base seems like the only option, and there's only one chance, the moment of the missile attack. Even if it doesn't completely destroy West Mountain Base, it can at least cause huge panic, giving me an opportunity. Now, I have tons of TNT explosives. If I can enter during the chaos and deploy the explosives inside West Mountain Base, the explosion would be spectacular. Even if it doesn't destroy West Mountain Base, the people inside would definitely be killed by the powerful blast. Thinking this, Zhang Yi returned to Yang Xinxin's room. Now, help me gather all the information on West Mountain Base's military forces and weapons, as well as all related information on mutants. Yang Xinxin was surprised. Is brother really planning to attack West Mountain Base actively? Zhang Yi looked at her calmly and said, we need to gather all their information first, to see what their actual strength is. If the strength gap isn't big and there's a high chance of success, why not try? We need to turn from passive to active. Better to strike first than to wait for a hundred punches. If their strength is too great, then consider what I just said a joke. Hearing this, Yang Xinxin laughed. This is the Zhang Yi brother we know. Now, for Yang Xinxin, retrieving information was like picking something out of a bag. She quickly turned around and told Zhang Yi, the information is ready. You can look at it now. After making room, Zhang Yi pulled up a chair and started to go through the data. The base currently has over 500 regular soldiers, 64 special forces members, excluding Liang Yu. There are six existing mutants and an additional 13 post-transformation mutants. Though their combat power is below that of natural mutants, they far exceed ordinary elite soldiers. They all likely underwent cell implantation from Ling Feng. These people might be a bit troublesome, but not a real problem. As for the regular soldiers, Zhang Yi didn't consider them a threat. After scanning through the general information, Zhang Yi quickly looked at the part he was most concerned about, the captains of the West Mountain Base Mutants. The first, Ling Feng, enhancement type, ability codename, Superman, possesses 10 times the combat prowess of a normal human, with speed and strength ratings of 5 stars. Zhang Yi took a deep breath, worthy of being the captain of West Mountain Base's special forces, the one who left fist impressions on the shelter walls with his bare hands. Fortunately, he is a close combat type mutant. As long as I maintain enough distance, even with his formidable physique and skills, he can't do anything to me. The second, Fang Zun, ability codename, Fireman, can release high temperature flames from his body. Zhang Yi laughed. Awakening fire type abilities during an ice age is practically useless. The third, Xin Shuerong, control type, ability codename, ice block, can create solid ice blocks for combat. The fourth, Su Mingjie, beast man type, ability codename, toxic beast, can transform into a giant monster with greatly enhanced strength and bodily fluids are highly corrosive. The fifth, Shi Deong, beast man type, ability codename, frost giant ape, can transform into a giant frost ape, significantly increasing physical strength and cold resistance. The sixth, Yi Ronghua, psychic type, ability codename, which, misleading in nature, conceals her true ability of deep hypnosis, can hypnotize others through brainwaves, simulate death, or even cause brain death. The effect of her ability is optimized through eye contact. Zhang Yi was startled. Weren't sure Daeong and Jing Shuerong taken out by me? Did Ling Feng manage to save them? This was the first time Zhang Yi encountered a classification of mutants' abilities. However, it seemed rather general at this stage, only allowing for classification based on their ability manifestations. These categories were clearly not comprehensive. My space-based ability does not fit into any of these categories. Zhang Yi printed out the information on several captain-level mutants, thinking, my side strength is not weak either. Flower and Uncle Yu have excellent close combat capabilities. My space-based ability provides nearly invincible defense. Chun Lei's practical ice and snow control ability, plus Liang Yu as an insider. It seems we're not entirely without a chance. Zhang Yi reviewed the information several times, memorizing each person's ability type to ensure he wouldn't be caught off guard if they ever encountered. The most pressing issue 
was how to infiltrate the base, silently place the explosives, and ensure a safe exit. Do we really have to confront them head on? At a loss, Lou Karen suggested, instead of pondering alone, why not discuss it with everyone? If you're going to make a move, you'll have to bring them along anyway. Maybe they have some good ideas that could inspire you. Zhang Yi had this in mind and soon called everyone in the house. He laid out his plan. There's a rare opportunity coming up to take down West Mountain Base once and for all. I think everyone understands that West Mountain Base and we are irreconcilable. I, Zhang Yi, am not someone who seeks conflict, but I won't let others bully us. This battle seems inevitable, but I can't do it alone. I need everyone's cooperation. Hearing such a crazy plan, everyone in the room had different expressions. Zhang Yi looked at Uncle Yu and said, You're the eldest here. I want to hear your opinion. Uncle Yu nodded. West Mountain Base suffered heavy losses attacking our shelter. Now, reconciliation is impossible. Rather than waiting to be attacked, it's better to strike first. We found a good opportunity to use their weapon against them, create chaos, and I think we should seize it. Besides, my life was saved by Zhang Yi. Whatever Zhang Yi decides, I'll support him all the way. Then, Zhang Yi turned his gaze towards Chun Lei. Hesitating, Chun Lei mumbled, Are you, are you sure? They have an army, weapons, and mutants. Isn't this just like sending us to our deaths? Zhang Yi calmly responded, Don't worry, I've already looked into the mutants. They have only six. As for the regular soldiers, leave them all to me. Dealing with them is as simple as dealing with ants for me. And have you forgotten? So many of your fellow villagers died at their hands, including your first love, Su Lily, and her family. They were all killed by them. Chun Lei feigned ignorance, scratching his head. Actually, it's okay. I wasn't that close to the people in the village. And who is Su Lily? I don't seem to recognize that name. Zhang Yi, seeing Chun Lei acting cowardly, thinking, I thought I was cautious enough, but this fat guy is even more so. However, before Zhang Yi could say anything, Chun Lei hurriedly added, But boss, since you've decided to fight, then I'll support you all the way. Following you, I've had food and drink. If your plan fails and you die at West Mountain Base, then there's no point for me to live in this apocalypse either. Zhang Yi was surprised. This fat guy actually has a clear view of the situation. Chun Lei also expressed his loyalty. The most important thing is to choose the right platform, to be able to enjoy good food and drink with brother Zhang. I've decided to go all out. Zhang Yi felt reassured. This guy may be a bit too cautious, but at least he's not stupid. He knows he needs to bring value to stick with me. Otherwise, why would I keep him around? The three of them thus formed a united front, ready to take action. However, Chun Lei still nervously said, Boss, we have to plan this operation carefully. Zhang Yi laughed. I don't plan on dying anytime soon. Let's start discussing our strategy now. Uncle Yu said, I received professional military training back when I was in the army. I can offer some specific suggestions. Zhang Yi then looked towards Yang Xinqin. First, give them a brief on West Mountain Base's situation. All the information I just went through. Yang Xinqin took the two to the computer, while Zhang Yi pulled out his phone to contact Liang Yu. After all, for the plan to succeed, Liang Yu's role was crucial. Zhang Yi sent a message. Thanks for helping me out with a big problem. Before midnight tomorrow, take your students and hide in a safe place. There will be a chance for you to escape, and we'll be outside to meet you. Liang Yu immediately responded. I'll do my best to hide first, but you can also tell me the plan, so we can work together from the inside and outside. Zhang Yi could sense Liang Yu's excitement and informed her. We've successfully taken control of West Mountain Base's network, so don't worry about communication security. You'll understand the specific plan in due time. Just take care of yourself and your students. Liang Yu was indecisive, and Zhang Yi didn't want to disclose the detailed plan to her. Moreover, her students were still in West Mountain Base. She might not agree with the plan to bomb West Mountain Base with missiles to avoid unnecessary disputes. Zhang Yi did not reveal the entire plan. With the decisive battle against West Mountain Base looming, to ensure nothing went wrong, Zhang Yi asked Liu Karen to conduct a detailed analysis of West Mountain Base's structure. Liu Karen told Zhang Yi, based on my calculations, to deal with a shelter that can't be destroyed by 500 kilograms of TNT, they'll likely use heavy bunker buster missiles. Although these missiles might not destroy West Mountain Base in one hit, they will certainly cause a significant tremor. Zhang Yi pondered for a moment. If we cut off their power during the explosion, what would happen? After all, they're deep underground. Losing their light source would instantly cripple their ability to move. The whole base would be paralyzed instantly, certainly causing even greater panic. At this point, Zhang Yi was eager to try. Yang Xinxin, however, cautioned, I can indeed cut off their power through the network, but they will surely have a manual power restoration plan, and such standardized bases will definitely have emergency lighting. That amount of time won't be enough for you to infiltrate. Zhang Yi smiled lightly. I have my own arrangements for that. My main goal is to cause internal turmoil. Liang Yi will surely take this opportunity to escape the fourth life pod with her students. With Liang Yu taking the lead, those long oppressed residents of the fourth life pod will definitely try to seize control of West Mountain Base. At that time, there will be massive chaos in the fourth life pod, and all their forces will surely be dispatched to suppress it. That's when our chance comes. Chun Lei, still worried, asked, even if we successfully penetrate West Mountain Base, then what if we just take out their leader, Chen Xinyin? I guess a second Chen Xinyin will quickly take his place. That wouldn't completely 
completely eliminate them. There are thousands of people inside. We can't just kill them all, right? Chun Lei laughed heartily, thinking he had made a humorous point. However, seeing Zhang Yi's serious expression, Chun Lei's laughter abruptly stopped. Stunned, he looked at Zhang Yi. Boss, you didn't actually agree with me, did you? You're not really planning to take them all out, are you? Not just Chun Lei. Everyone present was shocked. This plan is too crazy. Just the few of us. Isn't this like going on a suicide mission? Zhang Yi laid it out. My goal is to wipe them out in one fell swoop, eliminating over 80% of their combat power. If possible, of course, it would be best to kill them all. Zhang Yi revealed his detailed plan. I have stockpiled thousands of kilograms of TNT explosives. All I need to do is infiltrate West Mountain Base, deploy the explosives inside, and set the explosion timing in advance. The detonation of such a large amount of explosives underground would certainly be interesting, Liu Karen thoughtfully said. The effects of external bombing and internal explosions are vastly different. Even if the structure of the base can withstand the energy of the explosion, the people inside definitely cannot withstand such an impact. Moreover, such an explosion will surely destroy the base's life support systems, like the air circulation and escape systems, which are critical. Additionally, the explosion will consume a large amount of oxygen and instantly generate intense heat. All these factors combined, if we can really detonate it inside, the success rate is undoubtedly very high. Hearing this, Chun Lei became excited, showing a stark contrast to his earlier cowardly demeanor. Boss, you're a genius, your plan is brilliant, but how do we infiltrate the base? We can't just barge in through the front, can we? What if we get lost inside and can't find our way out? Zhang Yi pointed at the computer screen. That's why you need to memorize the internal structure of the base. This is a matter of life and death. You must not be careless. Saying this, Zhang Yi took out two sets of white combat suits from the dimensional space. These were taken from the corpses of their special forces. Just put these on and wear the helmets. It shouldn't be too difficult to blend in during the chaos. As for the placement of the explosives, we'll choose the second life pod. That's where the main force of the base is located, along with various life support systems. Most importantly, their armory is there. If we can also blow up their armory, it would be killing two birds with one stone. The three men and one cat decided to conduct one last sand table exercise. Zhang Yi's plan was very detailed. Even the timid Chun Lei was impressed, calling it brilliant. Zhang Yi's dimensional gate in the narrow spaces inside the base was almost invincible, and Flower's mobility is not something ordinary mutants can compare with. If anything goes wrong, it can instantly transform into a combat vehicle, taking us all to the surface in no time. Once we're on the surface, things will be easier, to my knowledge. Their base only has one snowmobile. As for those dozens of dog sleds, they're hardly a threat. My snow vehicle can easily leave them far behind. Zhang Yi seriously reminded Chun Lei and Uncle Yu, you must remember, the most important thing is to save your lives. Whether or not we can complete the mission depends on fate. Inside West Mountain Base, with Yi Xiaoyan's help, Liang Yu arrived at the fourth life pod. She told her students, don't sleep at midnight tomorrow. I'll come back here to tell you all something important. The students unanimously agreed. Their continuous disappearances had left everyone anxious, and Liang Yu had become their only hope. She didn't tell the students about the escape plan for the next day. After so many events, Liang Yu had become more cautious. She knew well that if the news leaked prematurely, it would endanger everyone. After calming the students, Liang Yu left the dormitory. The next morning, Zhang Yi and the others were confirming their battle plan over a hearty breakfast. Zhang Yi said, the missile attack is scheduled for midnight tonight. We'll scout the area nearby an hour in advance. As long as the missile hits accurately, Liang Yu will surely lead her students out amidst the chaos. Zhang Yi emphasized, remember, we must wait for Liang Yu to come out before we act. If she can make it out, it means the fourth life pod is already in chaos. If Liang Yu doesn't show up, it implies there's a problem with our inside help, and we must abandon the attack plan. We need Liang Yu to guide us. Although we've memorized the base's layout, there's still a risk of getting lost inside. So, we must have Liang Yu lead the way. The plan is roughly to blend into the crowd during the chaos, then plant the explosives, and make our escape. If anything uncertain happens at any stage, we must prioritize escaping. Remember, safety first. It's not worth taking any uncertain risks. Hearing this, Chun Lei nodded vigorously in agreement, finding common ground with the plan. Uncle Yu pondered and said, So, you mean our action is predicated on Liang Yu being able to rescue her students, right? Zhang Yi smirked. You could say that. But in reality, he wasn't concerned with the fate of Liang Yu's students. As long as Liang Yu herself could make it out, that was enough. Zhang Yi put down his bowl. One last crucial point. As you know, if there's a battle inside the base, they won't be able to use their large weapon systems. Ordinary soldiers and handheld thermal weapons are not a problem for me. The most troublesome are those six mutants. If we really encounter them, I plan to deal with them using a divide and conquer strategy, but only as a last resort if we cannot escape. If there's a chance to run, escaping is definitely the first option. By night, the group was ready to depart from outside the house. Uncle Yu and Zhang Yi were bidding farewell to the women, while Chun Lei stood in the snow, feeling somewhat superfluous. At that moment, Zhou Kier, unable to hide her concern, said, Brother Zhang Yi, why not take me with you? If I'm by your side, 
side. I can heal any injuries in case of emergency. Xiang Yi reassured her. We won't get injured, and if we do get hurt, it would mean facing a powerful mutant. So having you there wouldn't make much of a difference. The emergency medicine you've prepared for us is already enough. Just wait here patiently for our return. After saying their goodbyes, Zhang Yi and the others headed towards West Mountain Base on their snow vehicle.